Hello, it's the summer solstice this weekend and the shortest night of the year may well be the warmest nights of the year so far. The biggest question mark in the medium range forecast is how long this hot spell of weather is going to last. Now the big picture is quite interesting if we take a look at the position of the jet stream at the time of recording sitting to the north of the United Kingdom. If we fast forward to Monday, and it's in a pretty similar position. Uh, but in the intervening four or five days, we are going to see some pretty significant changes. And really, we need to be looking not just at what the jet stream is doing above our heads, but what it's doing out in the Atlantic. And we have here a dip, a trough in the jet stream, and that is disrupting over the next couple of days. That is to say, it kind of breaks away into its own little circulation and pushes an area of low pressure up to the west of the UK before it all kind of merges back together to form that pattern uh, that we see initially. What those changes mean is that we are going to see some hotter conditions last for the next few days. But by the time we get to Monday, with the jet stream back in this position, the isobars at the surface are kind of following that jet stream, which means the winds at the surface will be coming in from the west and trying to bring in cooler air from the Atlantic. But as I say, plenty going on between now and Monday. So let's rewind the clock. And under the area of high pressure, initially we'll see temperatures rising because that high is basically squashing the air and that will raise the temperatures steadily but surely. Gradually, as we head into the weekends, that high will start to shift and temperatures will be rising because warmer air is wafting up from the south. Now, it's not going to be hot and sunny everywhere. We'll start pretty cloudy on Thursday across western Scotland, but even here it should brighten up through the day. We'll see those temperatures rising over 30 degrees Celsius across the heart of England, parts of eastern Wales. Notice parts of eastern England not as hot. Here there will be something of a breeze coming in from the North Sea, and obviously it won't be as hot across northern Scotland where it stays predominantly cloudy. By the time we get to uh, Friday, we'll start to see the influence of that trough and that'll be generating a bit more cloud at medium and high levels in the sky and the potential for one or two scattered showers from that cloud as well. Maybe even the odd rumble of thunder, but they will be pretty well scattered. I suspect most places will be dry, but what that will also do is generate more cloud at medium and high levels in the sky. And so that does offer a bit more of a question mark about the temperatures for Friday. Yes, we're still likely to get over 30 Celsius. The air is getting warmed by that squashing area of high pressure. But with a bit more cloud, it's hard to say exactly where the highest temperatures will be because that, that'll really depend on how much sunshine we see. Pretty confident though that these eastern areas, which we've lost that breeze from the North Sea, will be quite a bit warmer on Friday compared to Thursday. And again, pretty confident we will exceed 30 degrees Celsius somewhere across the heart of England. There's that trough dipping down, taking low pressure system just to the west of the UK and pushing the area of high pressure away to the east. Now, this is what the Met Office computer model thinks, the deterministic, the main run of the model. And we think that's pushing that area of high pressure away a little bit too quickly. But it will be generating that warmth pushed up from the south. I said initially we're getting the heat because the air is getting squashed, but as the high drifts away, it will waft up some very warm air the peak of the warmth likely to be on Thursday, on Saturday before we start to see that hot air getting pushed away on Sunday. But again, remember, this is the Met Office model and we think that's being taken away just a little bit too quickly. Saturday's weather chart does show, again, the threat of some scattered, perhaps heavy, even thundery showers, but they, they will be pretty well scattered. And again, most places won't see them and just stay dry. And that's where we're likely to see the peak in the temperatures across central and eastern parts of England, over 30 degrees, 33, 34 is just about possible. Notice further west, it isn't as hot. We are expecting the heat to be easing slowly from here, but it is perhaps going to feel stickier in the west because if we look at the uh, dew points, basically a measure of how much moisture there is in the atmosphere. And the closer the temperature is to the dew point, the, the, the higher the humidity, if you like. And notice actually on Saturday, some quite dry air getting into these eastern areas. So in the east, although we'll see the highest temperature at the surface, that's what the thermometer will be measuring, you probably won't feel too oppressive. Whereas for the west, even though the, the numbers aren't as high, the temperatures aren't as high, notice here the dew point is high. So 
it'll be more humid in western areas, even though the temperatures aren't as high and probably will feel pretty sticky and pretty clammy during Saturday. Now, that warm and humid air will gradually be working its way eastwards, and that will generate some very high temperatures uh, across the southeast, it looks like, on Saturday night and into Sunday, as I said at the start, probably the, the warmest night of the year. But the big question mark is how quickly that hot air does get pushed away. Now, these maps are showing the thicknesses, basically a representation of the temperature, which measures the uh, thickness between the 1,000 hectopascals and the 850 hectopascals. Uh, and the, the thicker that air, gap of air is between those two pressure levels, then, then the warmer it is because uh, it's, uh, it's, it's greater in volume. Now, you can see that the, the very hot air, the purple colours here, situated across uh, France, and in the Met Office model, that is all being taken away to the east by Saturday night, and by Sunday it's cleared well away to the east. But as I said, we think that's happening a little bit too quickly in the Met Office model. And if we look at what's happening in the European model, the previous run, you can see that that's holding on to the heat across the uh, south in particular on Saturday night. And even on Sunday, uh, warmth is still hanging on across East Anglia and the southeast. So although it is going to be turning cooler from the west during the weekend, it is still likely to be pretty hot on Saturday. Now, this is from the most recent run of the European model model ECMWF and this is showing the chance of getting over 30 degrees Celsius with a very high chance over central and eastern England on Saturday and still a chance on Sunday across those eastern areas. We still think we'll get to 30 Celsius across the uh, east on Sunday. What about beyond that? This is, after all, the 10-day trend. Well, there's just a hint, although a, a small chance, a small probability that still we could get close to 30 Celsius across parts of the south even into next week. So although we're going to lose that heat and humidity, it's a big question mark about next week. The weather's going to be probably oscillating more through next week. We'll see a greater fluctuation. We've already seen the position of the jet stream for Monday, taking up that more kind of typical position, sitting across uh, the far north of the UK typical for this time of year at least. And the jet stream steers low pressure systems, so they'll be likely hanging out somewhere to the north of the UK. And the closer you are to the low pressure system, uh, the more likely you are to have outbreaks of rain. We've already talked about those westerly winds likely to be dominant. And that's what this is showing, the probability plot of the different flavours. If we break the flavours of weather down into eight uh, different types with the probability of that particular flavour up this axis and the dates going along the bottom there, you can see that for the uh, first part of next week, the dark blue is dominant. Westerly winds will dominate our weather patterns. Uh, beyond that, we see more introduction of the lighter blue, but that is a southwest. There's not a great deal of difference between the two. And the most likely pressure patterns through next week are all pretty similar, with low pressure sitting somewhere to the north of the UK on each day. Uh, and that generates uh, more rain across the northwest of the UK. The rainfall anomaly is higher here than anywhere else, and always the winds coming in from the west or the southwest. That's our predominant weather pattern through next week, but day on day we will always continue to see those variations. It doesn't mean it'll be completely dry across the south. Those weather fronts could dangle their way further south to bring some showery rain at times. So I just wanted to show you this uh, finally for Glasgow. I'll show the one for Bath in a second. Uh, the temperature at 850 millibars, or about a mile up, one and a half kilometers up, showing how the temperatures are going to rise over the next few days, but then really start to oscillate as we go through next week, suggesting weather systems will be moving through in Glasgow, and we'll continue to see that oscillation further south in Bath as well. So a more changeable weather pattern through next week, but generally speaking, the further south and east you are, uh, the drier it'll be, and the further north and west you are closer to those low pressure systems, the greater chance of seeing some outbreaks of rain. But the days are more likely to be variable compared to this week, where the weather is more, you know, in a straight line there, is more solid with that heat just building day on day. As always, for the day-to-day -day variations, particularly as we get into that longer range, you want to be staying up to date with the Met Office. Showed you the bath profile there, that's pretty close to Glastonbury, and if you have got uh, Friends going to Glastonbury, you want to know the details then, again, just do keep up to date with the forecast. We'll be posting much more about that. Best way to do that, of course, subscribe uh, to our YouTube channel and follow us right across social media.